four or five families lived in the same neighborhood, and all of a sudden, one day, it just ended. Well, I, I was born in Chester, so the city changed very much. My parents still furious. I don't know how nice it used to be. You know, I was just still getting caught from my... They shut down the train station! <laughs> you used to be able to take that train to 69th Street, Philly. I'm like, I know, Pop. <laughs> Ed, so when, Ed. when did you move out of Chester? Oh, I, when I was a kid, I moved to Chichester. Uh, which, you know, people in Claymont would look up to. No, I'm just saying that. Um, but, you know, so you 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 wrote a book about this? Oh, we wrote a few. Yeah. And the, That's like asking you, have you, ever, have you ever been in front of a radio microphone yeah. before? Yeah, do you, uh, but, but it's only you're, you're upset about what happened in Wilmington? I'm not upset. I'm just yeah. telling you what happened. Yeah. I'm not upset that I'm sitting next to you. I'm just telling you what happened. Yeah. Ooh. So here's what happened. I document black criminality, black violence, wildly out of proportion, places like Chester. But I also document the other half, which is how reporters and public officials are in denial, deceit, and delusion about it, and how it causes so much damage. The big, the big guy over there was one of the first guys to read my book, give it national exposure, really kind of gave me a shot in the arm. So I'm guessing on Long Island, you fellas had a little bit of experience with the fellas. Oh, well, Long Island, let's see, uh, Suffolk County was uh, uh, untouched for a while. And then uh, some neighborhoods, oh my goodness, MS-13 is uh, running rampant now out in Suffolk County. I read about So what about Chester? So the place you grew up in Chester, if you went back there right now, what would it look like? Uh, Chester is uh, a very impoverished place. Any other common organizing feature about Chester besides the fact that everything The industry is gone, the, the work is gone. Anything they, else? It used to be a factory town. Anything else? Uh, you, if you're asking They're closing me, all the factories down? Oh, no. no. But yeah, that's, it's very true. It is somewhat of a Springsteen song. The church that I was uh, baptized in, that's gone. That used to be the center of that neighborhood when you talk about that. You yeah, just a crack house. The old resurrect... Uh, you know who was uh, from my neighborhood? It was Joe Klecko. Joe uh, Klecko, Klecko from, from the, the Jets. Uh, the Jets, the yeah. uh, New York Sack Exchange. And uh, Flathead is from my neighborhood. Uh, I time. No, this is a guy who enjoys a party package or two and is willing to get on a plane to do it. Wow, okay. So I grew up in Chester. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a white working class place, mm -hmm. maybe mixed. Now it's a chocolate city. It's a dangerous city, way more dangerous than a lot of crimes. Well, we've got a casino now. Let me ask you a question. What's that mean? What's that mean? Like, we ask you about what is happening. You're saying it's all poor people. I say it's a black thing. You say it's a poor thing. What's that mean to you? It does I mean, it means that the industry is gone. It used to be Scott Payton. All industry the people in Chester there. want jobs, except yeah. they just can't find them. Yeah. So if you go to the Chester Unemployment Office, there's going to be lines around the corner of black people going, I can't find jobs because racists like you two guys won't give me a job. Is that your worldview? Uh, I don't have a worldview about that. I haven't thought about it. I, 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 saw, I, went, I saw that line in Chester. I saw some unicorns in that line. Once. Oh, okay. So it doesn't happen. Guess it does, yeah. You know what? I'm going to say this is an alt-right show. I don't think we've looked much into the mulattoes. And what they've done. <laughs> yeah, like well, my president of the United States. Yeah. Like my mom said to me, they don't fit in either world. Discuss. This is all right. The uh, president of the United States, uh, the uh, last president, was indeed a mulatto. Yeah, we don't use that term anymore. Though. We don't. We don't. We, we, we use a uh, high, high yellow. Yeah. I think that's what we have. That one I hadn't even heard. My grandmother said that one. Your grandma? Yeah, I, I've heard a lot from my, uh, yeah. my relatives. There's... Um, Especially with the holidays just having passed, uh, I got together with some old uh, aunts and uncles and yeah. relatives and whatnot. And uh, boy, the vernacular! Yeah. Um, just the lost, like the uh, like the sea scrolls, mm -hmm. written in a, a dead language that uh, rarely rears its head uh, these days. Oh, there you go. Uh, I definitely want to talk about something we were getting into before, which is this seems to be a a, an undermining of the traditional values of this great country. And we talked about some of these uh, th things that Owen Benjamin was talking about yesterday, the, uh, the children, trying to, you know, uh, just, just shoehorn in this weird uh, uh, social justice agenda into our society now. You see it in commercials and movies and TV shows. And uh, there's a boy here, young young child of 10, and apparently... Uh, he uh, wants to open up his uh, own 
drag club just for children. Now, this is the kind of stuff that I was getting at when I'm saying there seems to be a little bit of an issue here. They go, you know, if you want your kid to be a, a girl, if he's a boy or a boy, it's your kid. Apparently, you do whatever the fuck you want with him. Uh, but this now takes to another level. Even Ronnie's got to agree with this. How did, so they, you found one kid who's opening up a, a store for drag? For a drag club. Like, he wants to... Now, do you think this is okay... Do you think that's okay for you to take your son and, and gussy him up like this and, and, and put him out? First of all, it's sexual, sexualizing a child. That's what it's doing. Look, look, I think uh, this looks like the Mummer's Day parade to me in Philadelphia. The Mummer's Day parade? We had a lot of feathers. Yeah. We had a lot of fancies. A lot of fancies. Yeah. Is that what they yeah. call fancies? Yeah, there were the Mummers and Shooters. Uh, in Philadelphia, they have to say, don't shoot your gun. At midnight. Oh, really? My dad, uh, just up to like two years ago, shot his gun up into the pacemaker. Just bam, bam, bam. Yeah, the pacemaker, he can't shoot it off. So this is the, oh, this is the little drag kid. Now, I've, I've seen more and more stories like this, though. You, said, you know there's not a lot. You know that there you are find a few. these things to make yourself crazy. No, that's not no, true. No. Hold on, hold on. If you go to schools, schools are t teaching people about tricks. About transgender yes. people. Teachers are going to seminars about transgender stuff. It's very normalized. Very They're normalized. normalizing it to the point where it's not so much, hey, here's a lifestyle someone's choosing. It's presenting it to very impressionable young children who might think that day or week or month that that's what they want to do. And it will last and stay with them now uh, in pictures and things like that. Let me just say this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You went to school. They um, tried to teach you algebra. Did any of it stay with you? No. Well, you can't teach, teach kids. You can't teach kids shit. Well, a tranny wasn't trying to teach yeah. me uh, uh, algebra. Yeah. But uh, this kid, look, this is just not, uh, I, I don't, I, I think this is some type of bad parenting right here. I'm not, you know, I don't focus on this kid. Like I said, you can look at me. In that cowboy fucking outfit that I had. And when I wasn't dressed like a cowboy, I was either dressed as a sailor yeah. or a fireman. Construction worker. <laughs> I was very close to that. If I would have had an Indian thing, I would have done it. An Indian? That's yeah. a, see, Ronnie, I, I understand what you're saying because I, sometimes as I, I'm, I'm racking my mind with all of this stuff, I think, what would Ronnie B. think? Yeah. And Ronnie B. would just go, why? I don't give a fuck. I don't really care. I know, and, and I, 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 I envy that. But I also think, hey, but if everything is just, it builds up. Like, all right, that's one kid. Mm -hmm. But there are others. I've seen it. You're looking and at there's there's another they, you know, if you, Anybody who knows what they actually teach in grade schools, including lots of stuff about race, including how all white people are racist, black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism. It's okay for kids to be drafted. If you actually see the books, yeah. look at the seminars, if you go to the teachers' colleges and see what they're teaching the teachers, you would be astonished. You don't know what they do. It's crazy. I have no idea. Well, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I had... I no, no. It's all right. Like, even when, I, when I, my kids were young and I went to PTA meetings... Now, nobody knows. Same Parents way don't I was know. in school. Parents don't you know. just didn't care. It's like, whatever, oh, no. please. You didn't care. This. Now, if, you read, if you read the books that the teachers are reading on how to teach the kids, it's astonishing. If you look at the people who are on school boards, they are the dumbest, least achievers out there. It's amazing what's going on in schools. I have seen uh, some of the uh, people that are, are teaching in their, their ideology does seem to be very hard left. We are all right. Mm -hmm. This is what this show is. Almost too much. <laughs> Think about Baltimore. Sixteen high schools in Baltimore. They don't have. They're black high schools. They don't have one kid, not one person, that can read above a third, read or write above a third grade level. So there's all these crazy stuff going on you in schools. You know what? They're Nobody knows. in state every year, and I never hear you. There's so, other ways of being smart. I guess you got to take the uh, the bad with the good. Yeah. The good with the bad. A uh, basketball. <laughs> now, as far as reading at any level, right? I mean, you see how uh, Anthony is dependent on his phone, or as I call it, pocket crack. Yes. And that thing is going to be reading to you soon within 16 months. Yeah. No one's going to read. Just like no one writes cursive today. No one has handwriting. I don't know what that is. Yeah. No cursive one. Cursive writing. Or yeah. printing. 
They don't even teach that to kids now. They just, just teach them. Vo- no, that's done. It's void. And you're like, Alexa, oh. Alexa, do me a favor and write me up a report on the on the revolution. I uh, I don't like that. I, I have an Alexa. I, I'm going to answer the weather. I'm going to guess you're a constitutionalist. Maybe that, I'm just a guy who keeps my eyes so you're open. You're just a regular guy. You're just a regular guy. You sit on a swivel. Yeah, I understand. You're a constitutionalist. I mean, we put out 600, 700 movies a year in this country and have for the last 80, 90 years. How come there's never any fucking stuff about the Founding Fathers, right? How come we've never seen a Ben Franklin movie? We go back to the Civil War. Every year we got to watch a fucking English person doing, you know what I mean? Like in the 1600s or the Middle Ages. We never watch anything about the American Revolution at all. So, so like a, 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 a mainstream feature film. Yes. At least in the movie theaters, not like on Nat Geo or something Nat like Geo. that. That well, is her movie. So the, so the alternate question is how many movies, how many black movies, mainstream black movies, yeah, you get back that black thing in the right last right three right. years? I mean, yeah, you're right there. Yeah. So you say. Well, this is like this is like case A of yeah. denial, deceit, and delusion. I'm That's sitting right next to you. That's you. Because you don't know what you're talking about, but that doesn't stop you from talking. So I'm not one of those guys that sits here and listens to bullshit. Well, first of all, don't fucking come in here like we're on the same fucking level with this. I was asked to be on his fucking show. I wouldn't be talking about race if it was up to me. Because you don't know anything what you're talking about. Why are you talking? If you don't, if you don't, you don't, if you don't know what you're talking about, if you, if you don't know what you're talking about, why say it? I fucking made a joke because that's why Anthony fucking had me. Guess but I forgot not, to laugh. What's that? Guess I forgot to laugh. I don't give a fuck, dude. I'm not fucking here to fucking be angry all the time. I'm, at, I'm telling Anthony to go back to the way he used to be. What was that, Anthony? He was one of the funniest fucking people in the country. I'm still hilarious. Oh my god, what a week. What a fucking week this has been. Uh, let me let me look in my um, radio guy handbook. How to how you handle this situation. Well, what what is the fucking problem? That I made a joke? Yeah, I don't know what the problem is. We, we, Ronnie does what Ronnie does. And uh, Colin does what Colin does. And, uh, you know, oil and uh, water, I guess. Uh, what am I, the enemy? No, Ronnie am never. I the fucking enemy? Ronnie never. I have a... Uh, around and fucking... No, Ronnie, come on. I have a, uh, a deep love and respect for Ron Bennington over the course of the years. Me and uh, Ronnie have been compatriots and... Uh, uh, been on the battle lines of uh, many a radio station. Uh, so, no, of course not. You're not the enemy at all. You're not the enemy. Colin has his points. I, I think he's very... Uh, it would help for me to be quiet. No. For his points. Of, of no, doing. not at all. Colin has his point of view on things, and, and some people share them, some people don't. And, it you know, a lot, it's very he's very passionate about it. And uh, it, well, Colin and I were going to go AARP fucking boxing here a second ago. It was, uh... It was going to be the world's oldest boxing match. <laughs> it would have been, been the world's shortest boxing match. There's no, guy. Come on, there's no reason to even insinuate that physical violence need take place on this program. My God! Oh, this fucking week already, and it's a short fuck week. Just tragedy after tragedy. I, um, I mean, what happened? We were, we were having fun. Yeah, I thought we were. You know, I guess I said a couple things. Yeah. You know, I got a little out of line. No, <laughs> Ronnie. I will let you guys speak. No, Ronnie, Ronnie, please. I'm not going to have you just sit here and not speak. And, and, um, oh my goodness. Just, okay, hold on. I know what to do. Are you going to do your live read? Opie. I'll do the old Opie trick. Take a call. <laughs> oh. Tom! Tom! Yeah, hey. Man, I'm listening in. It feels like I'm back at my Thanksgiving dinner with my family here. I'm sweating. I'm literally sweating here. What are you worried about? What went wrong? No, I just, uh, you know, I don't, I, I don't want um, bad ill will. I don't want ill will, you know. Well, I was hoping to hear uh, Ron you, you, talk about uh, Elvis Presley going to Graceland. That's, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, uh, uh, get rid of your caller because we can fix this. 
Here's the thing. You invited this gentleman on for a reason, right? Yes, yes. When, when Have the conversation. I could be quiet. I don't have to be a wise ass and jump in. Have the conversation. No, but I like... I, <laughs> there's the, the spaghetti on the wall. That's what my dad used to do during arguments. I would cry. You don't have to be nervous, all right? The second you get a feeling like you did yesterday about your mom, you get nervous. Don't. Talk to your guest. I, um... What would you like to ask your guest? In 20 years of doing this, I don't have a clue. And he's I a, don't have a clue. What's your book about? What to do here. I can talk about the, my stuff, you know, from now until to, tomorrow morning and without stopping. i tell you what was interesting. Well, well, if you want to talk about my stuff, I, I mean, there was a big story this morning in the paper about how in Baltimore they think they need more cops. So I was prepared to talk about why that's kind of a, a ruse. So, I, you know, so, and my book is about black violence, I document it all over the country, how it's wildly out of proportion. That's the crazy part, but the, that's the one crazy part. But the other crazy part is how reporters and public officials are constantly ignoring it, denying it, condoning, excusing, encouraging, even lying about it. Again, I document this stuff. There was a huge story down in Philadelphia three days ago. I just did a YouTube video on this. A guy named Hank. Hank, every, every station has kind of like one of these, like, I'm Hank, I'm the tough guy, reporter, right? News guys. Hank goes to the Camp Mall in Camden, New Jersey, Cherry Hill Mall. Uh, uh, a suggestion that I think would work out. We have we have gravely made an error in uh, mixing of guests today. I don't Colin, know. Wait, no, no, Ronnie. Rachel. Colin, would I, you would you be okay coming back at a later date? Of course. Very good. Now, let's sit down for one second. Yeah. I just want one thing, me and you. How would you solve this? Colin takes over. How are you going to solve this problem? Let me ask you a question. No, I'm going to ask Okay, here's the question. I'll answer the question with a question. If Anthony were outside standing in the rain, how would you solve that problem? I would bring him inside. I would tell him to get the hell out of the rain. So if, somebody's going, if black people are going around committing an unbelievable level of violence, wildly out of proportion, why isn't the simplest solution the best? If you clonk somebody on the head, why aren't you going to jail? But yet we hear... On what, what yet, yet we hear on I document how we hear, like in Philadelphia, they say black people are relentless victims of relentless white racism, so they're not putting black people in jail for this anymore. Have you been to any jails? It's filled with black people. <laughs> Why? But, but for the reason you said, there are black people in jails. Why is that? What uh, there's only two reasons. Only two reasons. One, yeah. they're there because of white racism, right? Or two. They're there because they got commit, caught committing some very nasty crimes. It's hard to go to jail. You know that. No, not really. People oh, yeah. go to jail all the time. Very hard to go. But what you're saying is we need to put all the black people in jail. No, just the ones who, just the ones who commit crime. I think everybody's on the same spot there. Anybody who commits a crime goes to jail. So I think I, instead, I don't want you to... No, I, I honestly... You come all the way up here from Delaware? No, I'm, 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 I was up here anyway. Yeah. Honestly, I, I just feel I'm making a command decision here. That we will have uh, uh, Colin back at a later Jesus. juncture. Thank you, Colin. I could come back at a later No, no, Ronnie, Ronnie, please. Come on now. We, uh, yeah, we, we need to, uh, we need to uh, do the I fucking this, this, this. 2018, starting out great. Great. One dead mother in a fucking crazy ass show. Why does that make you so uncomfortable? We just had, this is what we always did our whole life, it was radio. Oh, but this is, I was always the one that could sit back and make jokes. Yeah. Opie had to deal with this. It was. <laughs> now it was I finally fun. understand what Opie did. We're in all, <laughs> we're in all right show. That's us now. We're trying, we're taking on we're re the minorities, I the sexual minorities. Look at there's children dressed up, Ronnie wearing feathers. We've got to do something about it. We need our guns. Well, that I agree with. No, Ronnie, we we are um, we are definitely not an alt right show. I could be honest with you there. Uh, over the course of of the past even couple of years, or at least a year, I have really tried to rein back a lot of things that people have um suggested you yeah. know uh and and i i think i have 
There's a lot of, look, look at all the fun. Well, look, look at all the fun. But let me explain. Smart employee uh, mauled by a pit bull. By the way, story. Uh, let me also Peter, explain. Fucking astute. Uh, uh, let me explain this, too, with, with the thing with Colin. I wasn't upset by any political view he had. This is when he told me to, that I had to shut up. That You know what uh, I mean? No, I, I understood and that. And all of a sudden, you know, everybody's a little bit of a corner boy. That's you know what I mean? that's what I I realize. You know, yeah. you're not you you you've listened to many different views over the course of your career. I'm certain. I'm from the same fucking neighborhood as this guy. <laughs> My neighborhood is all black. I'm not the neighborhood I, I was born into, but I'm not fucking freaked out about it. You know what I mean? Right. I, that neighborhood turned poor as we went into middle class. Same as what happened to a lot of people here. Uh huh. The, the the problem that you have is that you're not moving those people like people aren't moving up generation by generation. Yeah. That when the poor people went in there, they stayed there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Where my people, we were poor, moved up until I'm living in beautiful Manhattan. Right. New York City, 212. <laughs> you know? That's, that's the thing. If you look at Little Italy... Those people moved on. Everybody acts like, oh, it's so sad. The Italians aren't in now Little the Italy. Are there. Yeah, because the, the Italians moved to New Jersey suburbs or Long Island suburbs. That's the Sopranos. Sur- yeah. So, you know, people get nostalgic about that. But I think, uh, but do you think black people aren't being arrested? No, I know that being arrested. That was a f- hysterical c- line because it yeah. was so true. It's like, you ever seen prisons? A lot of full of black people. Right, and any white person that goes in there, they actually say, "We better keep an eye on this white guy that just got right." Right, I, I, I get it. I yeah. just, dude, oh my god, <sighs> <sighs> fucking exhausted. Why, man? Ready? Because that was just craziness. Because I have like.